We are always told to eat local. America, Slam. America. But is eating locally grown food really the best thing we can do for the environment? It's pretty easy to overlook the effect our diets have on the environment, but food production and waste are attributed to 19.1 billion tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions per year. That's around 34% of global emissions. This can be further broken down into many facets of farming, food production and transport practices. Usually, when it comes to such massive emissions, we can point the finger at large companies. But in the case of food, that's an astonishingly high percentage of emissions for something we have, as individuals, such control over. In developed countries, a large portion of the food we eat is grown thousands of miles away from where we consume it. So perhaps eating locally is the best thing to focus on. It's quite a logical change to make. Why would you want your food to be shipped or even flown all the way across the world when you can eat food grown down the road? Surely that's better. Well, it depends what you want to focus on. Eating locally sourced food definitely has its benefits. Producing and processing food locally contributes to the revitalization of local land, provides employment, and crucially reduces transport miles. But how significant are transport miles on the total of greenhouse gas emissions of the food we eat? Well, it turns out that for most diets, it's much more important to focus on what we eat rather than where it comes from. Let's go through a quick example. Whilst there are many valid ethical arguments against choosing to eat avocados, they are most often associated with having a high carbon footprint due to their air miles, making environmental vegetarians and vegans who eat them look like hypocrites. But is this really the case? Let's take a look at the humble quarter pounder. If we just take a look at the beef for now, this quarter pound of beef has 6.85 kilograms of CO2 equivalent emissions associated with it. Let's compare that to a single avocado, which has 0.375 kilograms of CO2 emissions equivalent associated with it. That means that for just the 228 calories worth of beef and a quarter pounder, you could have just over 18 avocados. That's just under 3000 calories worth of avocado. So even the environmentally destructive avocado is still much less damaging than beef when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. It turns out that for a large portion of foods, Transport miles make up a very small portion of the total greenhouse gas emissions associated with them, and the choice of what you eat is much more important. Here, each colour refers to a different source of emissions from the product, such as land use or food processing. These tiny pink slivers are the emissions related to their transport. In the case of beef, only 0.3 of the 60 kilograms of CO2 equivalent emissions are due to transport. In the case of poultry, it's 0.3 out of the 6.1 total. In tofu, it's 0.2 out of 3 kilograms total. The reason why these numbers are so low is that only 0.16% of all food products are air freighted. What you will notice is that the worst emitters are meat and dairy products, especially red meats. But why is this? Well, it turns out that animals are just really inefficient. For every 1000 calories of meat we consume, Animals will have eaten just under 3,000 calories of edible crops and just under 6,500 calories of grass and pasture. These edible crops could have been enough to feed the average gym bro for a day, and some of the grass and pasture could have been used to grow more food or for biodiverse land, which could also sequester CO2 from the atmosphere. And when you consider cows and sheep, they also emit a very large quantity of methane while they're at it, which is part of why red meat is particularly damaging. This inefficiency goes beyond greenhouse gas emissions. Globally, we produce just under 6,000 calories of edible crops per person per day, as well as just under 4,000 calories per person of human and edible grass and pasture. Yet once we consider some basic losses and the vast inefficiencies of animal produce, we're left with just 2,530 calories per person per day, which would be fine if we lived in an equal world. But according to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, around 1 in 10 people globally are undernourished. And this is only set to increase as the population grows and food crises become more likely. Therefore, if you want to have the most impact on both mitigating climate change and world hunger, it's best to focus on what you eat by reducing or ideally eliminating animal products from your diets. If we take a more conservative estimate 
of global food production emissions being 13.7 gigatons per year, just under 30% of global emissions, then just removing beef and lamb from the world's diets would eliminate 7.1 gigatons of CO2 emissions, and becoming vegan would reduce global emissions by over 30%, eliminating 14.7 gigatons. That's enough to make our diets carbon negative, due to a reduction in emissions from food, as well as carbon sequestration due to regained land. And of course, if you already have a low carbon diet, and you're choosing between some seasonal veg, feel free to pick the local produce, since every little helps. Please consider subscribing and click the bell icon if you'd like to stay up to date with our videos. And finally, thank you to all our patrons who help make this content possible. If you want to support this type of content, please consider joining. Here you get early and ad-free access to our videos, bloopers and outtakes, and even contribute to polls on which topics we discuss and which charities see a share of our income. And as always, look after yourselves, each other, and most importantly, the planet around you. Thanks again, R. Eden. America loves American steakhouse.